Hi guys and welcome in this new video. The goal of this video is pretty simple. I will create a machine learning based trading strategy that will be profitable on the test set with you. And the goal of this video is to explain at each step all the potential error that you can do and you need to avoid to do to be profitable in your own trading strategies. So really be focused because it's one of the most important video of the whole YouTube channel. And if you want to learn quantitative trading much quicker, you want to have some e-learning videos, some personal support, some monthly project, you can just take a look to the AlphaQuant program into the description. And I really advise you to do it just after this video to benefit from the amazing discount thanks to the Black Friday. So let's switch directly into our Jupyter notebook to create our trading strategy. The advantage of this video is that it is based on a lot of things that you have already seen in the one week, one bot challenge. So if you are not already see it, you can really watch this video without any problem. But if you have some little problems about a function that I mentioned, you can definitively take a look to this playlist and you will have all the answers you need. So first of all, I will just import some basic libraries, NumPy, Pandas, Matplotlib, to create the data frames, to plot some graphs, and so on. Then I import a database. So I will just show you what this data frame will contain. Open ILO, close, and tick volume, like usual when you import some data from MetaTraders, for example. And you have there to the low time and the high time. And the question we might ask ourselves is why? The answer is pretty simple. Here we'll create a machine learning models, a supervised machine learning models that needs some features and a signal. And I didn't want to give you the basic signal, for example, about the next variation or the next month variation or something like that. I wanted to create something a bit more complex that might help you in your next trading projects. So we need to know the time when the low and the high are touched in order to create our target. Let's imagine that we have an hypothetical price. Here we have the price and here it's the entry price of your algorithm. Okay. The goal is to find if we touch the take profit or the stop loss first. So if we have, let's imagine a stop loss at 0 0.35, like we will take, our stop loss threshold will be there. And in the same time, we'll have our take profit threshold at 0.50%. And the goal of this signal will be to count how much candle we need to touch the take profit and how much candle we need to touch the stop loss. If we touch, for example, the take profit, we'll have a positive value, which will be the number of candle we have taken to touch this take profit. If we touch the stop loss, we'll have also a number, but this time a negative number to highlight the fact that we have touched the stop loss in 10 candles, for example, after our entry. And so we will do that for each part because for now we don't know when we will enter into a position because it will be based on the model we will create right now. So I will run this code. This code, the get barrier function, is given into the signal file that you will have access to also when you will download the code. And so it will create for us this new column labeling. And so here, as we can see, we have the number of candle we needed to wait to touch the take profit or the stop loss. Here, I have just created a small function that will help me to create a dummy variable thanks to this labeling column. If the number is below zero, I will put a zero. If the value is above zero, I will put a one. The goal is to be able to create a classification model if I want, or to use a regression model with the labeling column. So regression with the labeling column and classification with the dummy column. Then here I will create many features, the market regime indicator, a spread between high and close, another market regime indicator, a gap detection between the close of the previous candle and the open of the new one, the autocorrelation with several lags, the log return, some candle information, some volatility. So you will have a lot of different features. I have downloaded many features there. I will not explain why I have chosen this one or this one because it's not the purpose 
of this video. But to give you some ideas, you can use the linear correlation, the nonlinear correlation, you can use the impact of each variable, you can use the Shapley value on the first data to know which one you want to take, you can use a NDA, so you can use a lot of different things. And that's not the purpose of this video. If you want to know more about that, just take a look about the one week one bot challenge and you will have some information about it. Then I create my list of features and the name of the column I will use. First of all, I will use a regression, but I will explain you how to do it and the errors to avoid for the classification too. Then here we will do something extremely important. We need to remove the non values. And here we'll just take the features values and the value for the target to drop the non values because I don't want to drop some values without any purpose. For example, maybe, I don't know, the log returns 200 need the 200 first values, okay? And we will have a non value for the 200 first values. And so if it's not into the features, there is no purpose to remove this 200 first row, okay? So I remove only the rows I need to remove. Then we will create the different sets we will use to train our machine learning model and in the same time to test the model on unknown data. Then we need to create our machine learning model. For these videos, I have chosen to use a support vector machine, a regressor support vector machine, but you can use the model you prefer. But keep in mind that if you are using a support vector machine, you need to standardize the data always because it is based on a geometrical process. So we create the model and we train it. Then we do a prediction and we plot our results. Now we need to evaluate the model on unknown data. The first metric we can do on the regression is the mean squared error. But here we will not have a very insightful information because at the end, if the mean squared error is very low, it's very good, but into a data science way. But it doesn't mean that it will be profitable. So what we can do first is to compute the correlation between the prediction and the test. It can be a very good beginning, okay? Here we have nearly 10% of correlation, which is very, very good for this type of problem. And so to have something more understandable, we will just transform this prediction and this test into dummy variables. So here we'll have 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, okay? Here 1, 1, 1, like we did at the beginning. And once we have that, we can plot the confusion matrix, the accuracy, the F1 score, and so on. But again, some metrics are better than others. For example, here the accuracy may not be the best thing to use because here we have created a model that will do nothing or buy. And it's not sell or buy, for example, okay? So it means that finally, the do nothing part is not very interesting for us. If we do nothing, we do nothing. We not engage any money. So we need to focus on the buy side. And so to understand if this type of model, so do nothing or buy, for example, are good or no, we will more focus on the precision. Here, even if we have an amazing precision, we can't say it's good or no. We need always to take a look to the amount we will earn when we are into a good trade and the amount we will use when we are into a bad trade. Then we multiply by the number of positions we have taken. So 358 plus 502. And we do times 100 to know how much we have earned over this period. And now I want to directly tell you it's not the right amount. I have done a mistake on purpose. Why? Because maybe some of you have seen that we made an error. And the question is which one? So a very good exercise might be to just put pause on this video and come back at the beginning because the error is done below this cell there. We have done an error. So the error we have done is very basic in machine learning. We didn't shift our target, our signal, because our signal is based on the open price. It means that here we have incorporate a look headed base because here, for example, on the first row there, 
we have used always the open price to know if we touch the take profit or the stop loss. But to enter in position, we need to have all these features that are computed for a lot of them using the close price. So it means that here we enter in position using future information, okay? Because if we enter in position there at the open price, okay? But using the information from the close price, we do something that it's impossible to do in reality. So to avoid that, we need to shift our target by one. And so instead of taking from zero to 10,000, always here for the world, we need to take from zero to 9,099 for the X train and for the Y train, we'll take from one to 10,000. So we will add a shift of one between these columns. It means that we will use all these columns there, okay, to predict this one, because it is exactly the one you will use in live trading to know if you need to enter or quit the position. And so now we need to run our model using the right features. And of course, as this time we are not able to look the future to take our decision, the result will be worse than expected before. That's quite obvious. So all of that to explain you that you need to be really careful and that it's very easy to incorporate an error that will change drastically the result that you have. So be extremely careful. Here, as we can see now, it's not profitable because at the end, in average, over two years, we should have lost 30%, okay? But I want to insist on a point there. That's obvious that you will not find an amazing profitable trading strategy on YouTube. That's 100% normal. You need to focus on learning how to create a machine learning model. You need to focus on how to create a correct trading strategy. You can find this information on some courses, YouTube, or directly into my AlphaQuant program, of course. But you will never find a ready to use trading strategy because if you have a ready to use trading strategy, you will sell it in copy trading or you will sell it to some funds or something like that. You will trade it on Profirm. You will not give it for free on YouTube. That's 100% logic. Just to finish there, if you want to do a classification, instead of using labeling as target, you will use dummy like that. Then you run again these cells here, okay? And you will not use this time a SVR, Super Vector Machine Regressor, but a SVC, Super Vector Machine for Classification. So I can run that. And here I can see that I have only zero or one as output, which is quite obvious. As we said, it's a classificator. So here the correlation is not really understandable because it's just dummy variable, but we need to take a look to the confusion matrix and more precisely about the precision. Here we can see that the precision in average is a bit better, okay? But as we have much more trade, it's also not profitable, okay? And the last thing we need to highlight there is that we don't need a huge precision. For example, if I am able to obtain a 45% of precision, it's clearly enough to have something profitable. So just keep that in mind. And the last advice I can give you is that if you are using the classification, when you will train your model, you need to use balanced classes, okay? So you need to remove some zeros or to put two times, for example, some words with one in order to have 50% of observation targeted as zero and 50% of observation targeted as one. But be extremely attentive to what I will say. You need absolutely to test your training models using the original observation. So unbalanced, okay? Because it will give you very different results. So it was a quite long video, so I will stop there. We'll not go into more details right now, but if you want another video talking about machine learning specifications, some errors you can do or something like that, just let me know in the comment and I will do a video talking about that. And see you soon in the next video.